Welcome every, uh, everybody to This Week at Cyport. And I am your gracious host, Greg Andrews. I am the planetarium manager here at, at Cyport. Um, if you have questions about the stars, the cosmos, the universe, you can always email me at gandrews at cyport.org. Uh, today I am out of the darkness, if you will, of the planetarium, and I'm actually standing here in a very well-lit area of Cyport. And this is what we call the Anderson Fazell family and the Anderson Gas and Oil Company Foucault Pendulum area, okay? And so here is perhaps one of the most curious and most um, inspiring type of exhibits that we have here at Cyport. People will walk through here, walk by on the outsider over here, and they're like, what is going on with this big shiny ball, right? Uh, so thankfully, I just ha it happens to be one of my favorite exhibits that I love. Don't I love the planetarium too as well? Don't, but I also love this as well. So come on down here and let's talk about this right quick. Um, there is a sign I do want to point out that says "Warning: Do not touch the pendulum." It's not that anything awful or bad will or some curse will come upon you, but rather it's because this is an actual experiment. Is what this is, okay? So when, what's going on is this pendulum is swinging back and forth, but it does so in a straight line. So the laws of physics says the only thing it can do is go straight forwards and straight backwards. And so if you touch on it or you push it in any way, then it will no longer go straight forward and straight backwards. So having said that, because this goes forwards and backwards, then that technically means it should not be knocking any of these uh, mallets down but somehow throughout the day, it will knock them down. And so that sort of is the curious, curiosity of this, or the curiousness of this. How can this pendulum be knocking these mallets down when the only thing it's doing is going straight back and forth? It doesn't make sense until you realize it's not the pendulum that's moving around, it's the ground beneath it. Well, the only way that the ground underneath this can be moving around is actually due to what we call the rotation of the Earth. And so essentially what this does, this helps to prove that the Earth is spinning. Um, I always tell people as a physicist, we're taught to think from a different perspective. So imagine you tell me that the Earth is spinning. I'm going to ask you to prove it. So how can you prove that the Earth is spinning and you don't have this? Think you have an answer? Comment below. I'll wait. <laughs> and as you come to the realization, it's really difficult to prove that the Earth is spinning. Earth is spinning right now at about 1,000 miles an hour. But I can't feel it. I can't see it. But yet we've been taught that it's moving. And so this is the, one of the ways that we can actually effectively prove that the Earth is spinning. So as the pendulum swings back and forth, the ground underneath it is what's turning. So you notice that you're on the ground as well. So that also means you are turning around this pendulum. So as we sit here and we anxiously await for that next mallet to get knocked down, and we're like, go faster, go faster, go faster. Well, technically it can't because Earth is not speeding itself up. Uh, so you just have to be patient and wait for this though. And so that is what this is here for, again, to actually prove that the Earth is spinning. And so for that reason, this is called a Foucault pendulum. It's named after a French physicist. His name is Jean-Bernard Leon Foucault. And he used a demonstration like this in the year 1851 to prove to the world that the world is in fact spinning. Something we might take for granted, but history will show you that uh, people had a proclivity to say, the Earth is at the center of the solar system and everything else goes around it. And that's what, a, for a very, very long, long time, that's what people were taught. And so over the course of time, though, science began to say, oh, that's not true. And sometimes science is a very hard thing for people to accept, um, especially when you've been taught something else. And uh, you can see it's actually closer and getting closer and closer to this. So I can't, I don't know how many swings it will take, but eventually it will knock these down. Oh, I think two more. 
after this. <sighs> yes, woohoo! So one of the things that happens is we start this in the morning um, on days that were open. Um, before we open up the doors, we kind of open this and we actually started going north-south, right? So you'll notice that there are some directions over here. You have north, south, east, and west. And just over time, as the earth continues to spin, it looks, you find out that the pendulum continues to knock each and every one of these down, though. Uh, what's really cool is that this does not take 24 hours, though, okay? So please keep that in mind. Sometimes we, people like to think of this as a clock, and that's great. Keep looking at this, but it's not a clock. It does not take 24 hours, and there's a reason for that. That'll be something you'll have to come and check us out at Cyport, and I'm more than happy to explain it to you, as well as um, our other um, Cyport staff here. Uh, it has a lot of great science that comes along with this particular um, exhibit, and there's, there's a sign over there in the wall that talks about this fifth grader. You don't have, it's not that important, not that important of a sign. But if you check it out, it has a lot of great uh, information in it as well. How long between each day? Oh, great question. Uh, for those that did not hear, um, what is the amount of time in between each knockdown of the mallets? And it varies. Typically, um, it can be 10 to 13 minutes. That's kind of the average. But I've actually seen it take as little as eight and as much as 15. But that 10 to 13 minute time frame is, uh, is the, the norm for this, and going from knocking one side down and then the other, and it goes back and forth. Uh, there are 30 on each side, and the reason why there are 30 mallets, my understanding is because um, when we first um, opened up the Space Center side, which is what this pendulum is a part of, we were open from nine o'clock to six. And so you can calculate the travel distance of the pendulum in terms of how, um, how many degrees it will cover during that time frame. And so this represents that nine o'clock to six o'clock. So after six o'clock, you would come, most of not all of them would be knocked down. Um, nowadays, we close at five. So there are typically um, anywhere from six to maybe sometimes 10 that are left standing up still though. It's a, in a typical fashion, whenever you have something that's swinging back and forth, it will slow down and stop, right? You get on a swing, at some point in time, you stop. Well, thankfully, this has a, a mechanism that's set up that allows it to keep going back and forth and swinging. And you can't see it, but it's way up, up there above the ceiling. So up there is a, it's a room, and that, in that room, there's a mechanical setup wherein that, oh, excuse me, that allows the pendulum continue to swing back and forth. It's a combination of magnets and sensors. And just, I'm oversimplifying it, but these sensors, they detect that the cable is approaching and they activate a magnet. That magnet pulls on the cable and, and it lets it go. It's like three thousandths of a second. It's a really small moment of time. It's just enough to pull on it and then let it go and then that pull allows it to say, to regain the energy that it lost and then say, yes, continue to swing. So with that, Donna said, hopefully this helps to spark your curiosity and you learn some more about Cyport. Uh, thank you for joining us and feel free to contact us if you have any other questions or comments.